My fellow Whovians, how you guys doing? This is Alan, and I'm back with another Doctor Who review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 81st Doctor Who story, Planet of Evil, starring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. And the plot of Planet of Evil is as follows, from the back of the DVD. The Doctor and Sarah Jane answer an intergalactic distress call that takes them to a far-flung planet, Zeta Minor, at the edge of the known universe. Arriving at the same time as a rescue team, they search for survivors of an earlier expedition. But will anyone be allowed to leave the planet alive? Mm -hmm. And that's your plot of Planet of Evil. All right, Planet of Evil. Another classic. <laughs> Tom Baker's racking them up. <laughs> Another classic Doctor Who story from the Tom Baker era. I love this story. I've always loved this story. Yes, I love, love, love Planet of Evil. Uh, definitely one of my favorite stories from the Tom Baker era. It's inspired by both Forbidden Planet, the classic sci-fi movie uh, from 1950... Was it 1957? Or 1956? Yeah, 1956, I think, is when Forbidden Planet came out. I did a review uh, for, for that film. That's one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time, Forbidden Planet. So Planet of Evil borrows some stuff from Forbidden Planet, primarily the, uh, the id monster that uh, you only saw in the film as like... Uh, red animated outlines and that's basically what you get here with the antimatter monster that uh, there are times when you only see it as as like red outlines uh in here and um planet of evil also borrows elements of uh, dr jekyll and mr hyde and that's what you get you get a combination of forbidden planet and dr jekyll and mr hyde in this particular story and it makes for a terrific uh, four-episode Doctor Who story. Yeah, I've always loved this story. I, I, I have no criticisms of it, really. Uh, I think Tom Baker is in fine form here as the fourth Doctor. This is a great performance from Tom Baker. Uh, Elizabeth Slayton is terrific as Sarah Jane. She gets a lot to do in this story, and she makes for a wonderful companion, and she is terrific in, in this story, along with Tom Baker. Uh, and as for the uh, supporting cast... Uh, that make up the, the basically the crew of the spaceship that come uh, to this planet. Um, well, there's also, let's see, there's Frederick Jaeger, who plays Sorensen, who's the lone survivor of the earlier expedition, and then he later gets transformed into the anti-matter man, or anti-man. And uh, yes, very good performance from Frederick Jaeger. Uh, really cool effects, too, when he transforms into the anti-matter man. They put, like, these, these two little... Uh, I guess these these two little green dots or red dots over his eyes to make it look like he has like red pulsating eyes, and then of course he transforms into into a more of a, a hide monster, you know, with fangs and with the long stringy hair and claws, and uh, but uh, he's he's a man who's he's he's very tortured under the the antimatter effects of the planet. And, uh, yeah, very, very good performance uh, from Frederick Jaeger. I also enjoyed, let's see, Prentice Hancock, who you saw earlier in my all-time favorite Doctor Who story, Planet of the Daleks, uh, from the John Pertwee era. He also appeared in Spearhead from Space. Uh, as a as a reporter in John Pertwee's debut story, and Prentice Hancock returns here now as Salomar, uh, the captain of the uh, the rescue crew. I'd say it's a good performance from from Prentice Hancock. I liked him very much. He's he's a bit of a jerk. <laughs> Prentice Hancock he plays jerk characters really really well. He played a jerk fall in Planet of the Daleks, and now he's playing a jerk uh, spaceship captain <laughs> in uh, in Planet of Evil. But he's very good, Prentice Hancock. I also like Ewan Solon as Vashinsky. Uh, the eldest member of the rescue spaceship crew. Uh, he's also the uh, the spaceship crewman that has the most reason behind him, and uh, he's very, very, very appealing, I think, in the role of Vyshinsky. All the other actors who play the supporting uh, spaceship crew members are all very good, um, even as they're being mowed down, so to speak, one by one. Well, not mowed down with guns, but I mean, they're being killed one by one, really, by the anti-matter man. But uh, I guess the one crew member I have to mention uh, is uh, Michael Wisher, actor Michael Wisher, uh, appearing in his uh, final appearance, it, it, it turns out, in the role of crewman Morelli. Uh, Michael Wisher 
Wisher. He did a lot of Doctor Who. He was the very first actor to play Davros uh, in uh, Genesis of the Daleks. It's kind of weird why Michael Wisher would come back to play such a small, very, very little supporting role when he had a big, huge role as the first Davros in Genesis of the Daleks, but I guess he needed the money or whatever, so he came back and just settled into playing a very small supporting role uh, in Planet of Evil after getting such a magnificent role to play uh, as Davros in Genesis of the Daleks. But yeah, Michael Wisher, he's good. Small role, small. He doesn't do much, but I wanted to acknowledge Michael Wisher because according to Wikipedia, Planet of Evil is Michael Wisher's very last appearance on Doctor Who. I mean, he went on to do more acting stuff. Uh, very sadly, Michael Wisher passed away in 1995, so he's been gone a while now, but uh, great actor, and uh, he was the first Davros. He's the best Davros, in my opinion, and he will be missed. So, Michael Wisher, I salute you. Um, I love the whole look of Planet of Evil. I love the whole feel of the story. I think the, uh, the planet jungle sets, which are all red, it's just red, 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 very, very spooky. It definitely has a very Martian, you know, planet Mars kind of look to it. But man, oh man, the jungle sets in this story are, are terrific. I really, really love the details in the jungle sets, and they are really, really well done. Another thing I love about Planet of Evil is the lighting. The lighting in the story is very good. The shadow shadows that we see all over the place uh, when uh, the characters are out and about in the jungles and uh, the, the camera work, the cinematography. Um, there's, a, there's a hovering, uh, I, I guess this story features a 1975 version of a drone, if you like. There's like a, a drone machine of some sort uh, that comes from the rescue spaceship and uh, it follows the doctor and it follows some of the crew around so the crewmen who are back inside the ship can still you know follow their their movements it's basically a drone for all intents and purposes it's a drone machine and uh, the cinematography you know that's attached to this drone as the characters are walking around in the jungle very very good so this story has got a lot of great stuff going for it i also want to tip my hat to uh, the writer of Planet of Evil, that would be Lewis Marx, because I think his script for this story is very, very good. I also want to tip my hat to director David Maloney for his excellent direction. And um, I also want to say the antimatter creatures are very, very effective. As I said, they're based on the, the id monster from Forbidden Planet, where the, they appear in shadow, and yet we can see their red outlines. Very, very spooky, very, very creepy. And of course, when Sorensen transforms into the flesh and blood antimatter man, and he becomes basically a, a, a Mr. Hyde monster, very, very creepy. So the whole atmosphere of this story is really, really well done. I really have no criticisms. I can't think of a single criticism of uh, Planet of Evil other than maybe uh, it's too short <laughs> at four episodes, because even at six episodes, this story, I think, would have worked just fine. But, you know, that's really not much of a criticism. In fact, it's no criticism at all. I mean, this story flies by at four episodes, but I'm telling you, Planet of Evil would have worked perfectly fine at six episodes, I think. I just think the story is very, very engaging, very, very creepy, and uh, so well done straight across the board. Uh, wonderfully acted by Tom Baker, Elizabeth Slayton, and the supporting cast. Great writing in the script, great direction. Again, uh, the uh, Forbidden Planet visual effects regarding the antimatter monster, uh, the Jekyll and Hyde element, as well as the Forbidden Planet elements, uh, the jungle sets, the lighting, the cinematography. Everything about this story works. Everything about Planet of Evil works a treat, in my opinion. And uh, what can I say? I love this story, Planet of Evil. Uh, easily one of the very best stories in the Tom Baker era of Doctor Who, no question about it in my mind. So, I love Planet of Evil, a Doctor Who Tom Baker classic. All right, and that's my review of Planet of Evil. So coming up next on Doctor Who Review, I'm going to be reviewing the 82nd Doctor Who story. It's a very revered story in the history of Doctor Who, in fact. Pyramids of Mars. But, uh, what do I think of Pyramids of Mars? The fact is, it's been a while since I've seen this story, so uh, I am looking forward to taking another look at it and reviewing it for you. Pyramids of Mars, next time on Doctor Who Review. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then.